What a Friday it has been here at Nicholson Arena. Three semifinals in the books. One to go as Montana State Billings, the number one seed on both sides of the bracket, will take on the number four seed and the host Central Washington. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into the campus of Central Washington University. Good to have you along for our final semifinal here at the 2024 Great Northwest Athletic Conference Championships. So far today, we have seen three teams punch their ticket to the title game. Western Washington will take on MSU Billings on the women's side of things. And the bottom seat, Alaska Anchorage, just topped the number two Northwest Nazarene for their second upset of the tourney. They will await the winner of the Yellow Jackets and the Wildcats here in our final semifinal of the evening. It's been a back and forth day for the top seeds in each one of these games. We've had two of our three games decided by one possession and looking for more action here in the finale. Starting lineups for this one, Central Washington putting out Jordan Clark, Samad Hector, Swilly, Sanders, and Jello Lloyd from Montana State Billings. It's famous left hand, Saron Richmond, the GNAC Player of the Year, Jalen Todd, Daniel Moody, and Richardson for the Yellow Jackets. Sean, as we get this one started, what are the keys to this game if the Yellow Jackets want to get back to the championship? I think a fast start for them to try to take the crowd out of it because even though they're the designated home team, the higher seed in the white home jerseys, this is Central Washington University, home of the Wildcats. Good crowd on hand here on this Friday night. No place better to be if you're in or around Ellensburg. And if they can take the crowd out of it early, that'll be to their benefit. For both of these teams, they're the owners of one postseason title. For Central Washington, they earned it back in 2011 in the first ever GNAC Championships. And then the Yellow Jackets did it the next year in 2012. So for one of these teams, it'll be over a decade, and they'll have a shot tomorrow to claim their second title. Interesting. MSUB swept the season series, but in the GNAC Championships, Central Washington has a 2-0 advantage. As we get ready for a tip-off, it's going to be Maverick Sanders for Central Washington in the black uniforms. And in the white uniforms, Daniel Moody, the 6'7 senior, will take the jump for the jackets. They wear white. Montana State Billings, the top seed on both sides as both guys going a little early and it will be Moody that wins it back. We are underway here with the final game of the day. Taking it across half court, Jalen Todd, the GNAC Player of the Year. Zeron Richmond. Now Todd on the near side. Moody's gonna go to work in the paint, reverses it up. Didn't even look at the hoop when he let that one go. And now the Wildcats will get their first touch. A no-look layup starts this game. Interesting way to get this thing going. Moody getting fancy. This is Bradley Swilly, double team, now gets it off to Hector. Well, mid-range jumper, Jello Lloyd, leaves it short, collected by famous left hand. Montana State Billings, ninth GNAC appearances. Just won their first regular season title this year. Corner three from Daniel Moody will go, and the Jackets on the board. Moody missed the layup, dropping from deep. MSUB comes into this game fourth in the conference in scoring 76.9 points a game. Central Washington just ahead of them. A little baseline jumper won't go. Loose ball finally collected by the Wildcats. Second chance won't go, and the Yellow Jackets will retreat. Zaron Richmond, honorable mention this year in the all-conference nominations, brings it across and hands it off to Todd. Double team, Richmond gets through him, and on the right block, he gets it to go. Tough shot there for Zaron Richmond. Too big, too strong, split the defenders, easy layup. MSUB overall 20 and eight this year, 14 and four the conference record. Central Washington 18 and nine and 11 and seven in GNAC play. Corner three to get on the board. Wildcats can't do it as that one is missed by Bradley Swilly coming in transition. Here's Tot from the other corner, gets it again. 
I talked about a fast start for the Yellow Jackets. Eight nothing. Couple of threes down, two of two from deep to start for MSUB. They're out to a quick 8-0 lead over the host of Central Washington Wildcats. Step back three, this one's Jordan Clark. A little bit strong, hits off the back of the iron and out. Todd again. Here's left hand moving to his right, top side three, won't go. Hector skying for the rebound. Central Washington been excellent here at home. After yesterday's win, they are now 14 and one on the season here at Nicholson Arena. Going to work as Hector gets it off the glass, spins around and good. First points of the game for Central Washington take almost three minutes. Never a bad idea to run your offense through Hector. Another three for Tot. This one won't go. 8-2 our score. Yellow Jackets with the early advantage. Into the paint. A reverse. This one from Swilly won't go. Second time we've seen a no-look reverse layup. One for each side. Very odd shot selection here early on. Little floater. That's going to be good for Steve Richardson. And Moody went down hard. Moody back up quickly, but it's the right arm that's giving him trouble. If he landed on the elbow or the shoulder. He just transferred in from University of Texas, Permian Basin. This will be his lone season with Montana State Billings. Averaging 14 and a half points a game, good enough to earn him Newcomer of the Year and first team all-conference honors. He'll stay in the game. Looks like he's all right, but just a little bit dinged up for Moody. Wildcat basketball trailing by eight. Hector. Swilly motioning his offense around. Shot clock under 10 now. Sanders gives it up for Swilly. Swilly gets in the left side, gets it to go. Tough layup for Bradley Swilly, but it makes it a 10-4 ball game. Points at a premium right now for Central Washington. They need to climb back in this one. Last time these two teams faced off, it was February 3rd, MSUB with a seven point win. As we're gonna see an offensive foul called on Daniel Moody and that will take us into the first timeout of the ball game. 15-54 left in the first half. Jackets off to a quick start. They lead 10 to four here on GNAC.TV. Four players have already scored for Montana State Billings. They hold a 10-4 lead over Central Washington. Just under 16 minutes left in the first half here in the semifinals of the 24 GNAC Championships. Sean, initial thoughts? Two of eight versus four of seven. That's the difference. Running baseline. A little bit of an arm there from Maverick Sanders. He's going to get dinged for the offensive foul as he puts the arm into the hip of, I believe that was Steven Richardson, but a foul nonetheless is gonna be his first. Two of eight for Central, 0 for two from three. Conversely, MSUB, four of seven and two of four from downtown. Jackets moving a little bit quicker pace. They've had a couple transition buckets already. Central Washington a little bit slower, so we're gonna see whose tempo is going to match the other team. Who is going to allow the other team to dictate what style of basketball we play? Here's Jalen Tuck. 
He gets the give and go to Zoran Richmond. Wow. And then a foul underneath. Foul's going to be on Kaven Holden. Looked like a lot of ball there, and it was on the pass, on the catch of the pass. Holden, like his first personal. They send Richmond to the line. The senior playing for his hometown university graduated from Skyview High School in Billings. One of four players from Billings on this MSUB roster and one of three from Skyview High School along with Peyton Sanders and Kai Kaoba. Pretty good student section on hand here for Central Washington. We've certainly felt that energy from the home crowd in these Wildcat basketball games. Both the men and the women for Central Washington ranked or seeded number four in the tournament. Both making it to the semis to face MSUB. Did not work out for the Wildcat women. They lost 62-60 earlier today. Working into the paint, Cameron McNeil just off the front of the iron. Shots just not falling in the first five minutes for Central. Two for nine the start for the Wildcats from the field. On the other hand, that's another three for MSUB. This one for Steven Richardson. They are three of five from deep to start and make it a 15-4 lead, their largest lead yet at nine. Make it 11, actually. Central's digging themselves a hole early. They're going to have to climb out. Step back jumper, Kevin Holden won't go. Long rebound belongs to the Wildcats. They swing it back to the near side. That's Jeanette that can't connect. And then a traveling violation going to be called on Mitch Brzee. You would have thought coming into this one, Central would be the team with the energy, the spunk, the pizzazz. They have nothing to lose. They're the four seed. They're at home. They got the crowd behind them. But shots aren't falling. And seems like MSUB is the team controlling things and they have the better energy right now. You know, it's amazing what a quick start from a visiting team will do to suck the energy out of Marina. That's exactly what's happened here. Jackets came out hot and immediately got control of the crowd as they have not had the same energy as those first couple of seconds, especially during starting lineups. Jalen Todd waits for a high screen. He loses the dribble, now in a bit of trouble, gives it off to Richmond. Richmond driving with the shot clock at eight, loses the ball into the corner, and it's gonna be last touched by MSUB, Wildcat basketball. Collision in the paint, no whistle. Ball loose, over to the Wildcats. Jordan Clark brings it across the timeline. Central Washington trying to find some kind of offensive rhythm. They've struggled to get shots to drop so far in this game. 13.42 left in half number one. McNeil gets double team, poked away on the baseline. Going to stay here, last touch by Richardson. It's really good defense by the Yellow Jackets. Central having a hard time penetrating. Need to get that extra passing to move that ball to find the open spot on the floor. Four to shoot. Shot clock running down, driving. Clark, the fadeaway, won't go. Loose ball, Moody has it. And then Clark comes careening in. He's gonna get called for the foul. For Jordan Clark, his first. Just four points for Central Washington, six and a half minutes in. Not gonna get it done on any night, let alone a GNAC semifinal. Yeah, they're starting ice cold in this one. Looking back to yesterday, Central Washington was able to drop 90 against Seattle Pacific. They had a huge offensive game yesterday, not following it up with the start they needed if they wanted to compete with this Yellow Jacket club. We're seeing Jawan Tott into the game. He bounces it in for Emmanuel Ajanaku. Top side. Moving in, Richardson won't get his floater. Struggling for his own rebound, eventually pulls it away. Blocked on his putback. That's Mitch Bruzee with the block. 
Wildcats trying to get something. This one won't go. Brzee, the putback, that will. Brzee doing good things back to back on both ends of the floor. Wildcats need anything they can right now. Yeah, it's been some good contribution off the bench so far for a 6'9 junior out of Twin Falls, Idaho. MSUB takes their time. They have no problem going deep in a shot clock on any given possession. Todd in the corner, then moves it back out to the hash. Now getting into some trouble is Whitaker. Whitaker can't get it to go with the right hand. Holden pushing the tempo a little bit the other way. Numbers get back for the Yellow Jackets, so Central slows things down. Moving into the paint, wide open. That's Colby Jeanette that finds a seam through the defense, and MSUB just lost him in the shuffle. Nice, strong drive baseline. Quickly eight points now for Central Washington, and traveling by MSUB. Turnover number three for Montana State Billings. That's gonna put us at 12 minutes on the button. It looks like we lost the main scoreboard as well as the shot clocks above each hoop. And this might just be a power issue. I'm not sure what's going on here, but both shot clocks and scoreboard out right now. So while we get the technology active, it's back. So let's just go ahead and keep it here. Uh, looking at the numbers so far. Uh, Shot, we've got three turnovers for MSUB. That's turned into a couple points on second chance for Central Washington. But, uh, this is a seven point ball game right now and it looks like the technology issues continue. So they're gonna reset the scoreboard. We'll take a chance to step away right now. 15 to eight, our score MSUB leads with 12 minutes left in the first half here on GNAC.TV. Well, it looks like technology is fixed and we're back to action. Under 12 minutes left in the first half. 15 to eight, our score. Yellow Jackets leading the Central Washington Wildcats in the GNAC Championship semifinals. Driving to his right, Holden. Gonna be fouled on his way up. Can't get it to fall, but two free throws coming for the freshman. Foul's gonna be on Jalen Todd. It's funny how things slowly begin to snowball. Couple of turnovers, couple of missed shots by MSUB, and now Central Washington able to climb back in. Yeah, certainly they weren't going to be that cold the entirety of the first half. Just a really tough start shooting for the Wildcats to start this game. Just needed to hang on for dear life, not let MSUB go on a big run to start. You know, not only for the sake of the score, but also psychologically. You get into a big hole early, and you just go into a whole new mentality for the rest of this ball game. Holden misses the second. That's pulled in by Jonaku. And he's going to be fouled on the rebound. Foul goes against Colby Jeanette. Holden missing both free throws, something you can't do when you're down seven. We saw Alaska Anchorage really struggle with free throws in that first semifinal. Almost cost them the ball game. They snuck away with a 64 63 win over Northwest Nazarene. 11 and a half minutes left. Ajanaku passes it off to Richmond. Jalen Tott stuck in the corner. 
step back. Going to be a two. That won't go. And then left hand was out of bounds before he touched that one. So it will be Wildcat basketball on the team rebound. Wildcats need to take advantage of the scoring drought by MSUB. Chance with a bucket here to get it to a two possession ball game. 15 to eight our score, MSUB has led the whole way. Well, 15 footer, that one's gonna go. Cameron McNeil gets on the board. His first points of the evening. All of a sudden a five point ball game. MSUB has led by as many as 11 early on in this one. Top side three, Moody leaves it short. Wildcats, one tempo, they're pushing things, see if they can find something in transition. Dawson slows it down just a bit. Now drives to the left. He's gonna be fouled on the way up, can't finish it, but two free throws coming for him. Central Washington was able to weather the initial storm from the Yellow Jackets. And now look, they're only down five, heading to the line. They need a better better results at the line than the last time they were there. Seth Dawson, who steps to the free throw line now. We only saw him for two minutes yesterday in the quarterfinals, and he's getting some very meaningful playing time here in the first half. He'll hit that first free throw. 6'5", junior from Antioch, California, by way of Coastal Carolina University. You got 12. Maude, you got three. Maude, hot. You're back. 15 to 11, our score. And Dawson makes it a one possession game. The lead down to three for the Jackets. They came out of the gates incredibly efficient from the field, slowing down just a little bit. Richardson passing it off to Jalen Tott. And we're gonna get a whistle underneath Foul away from the basketball should be going on Kevin Holden. And it is. That is the fifth foul already here in the first half for Central Washington as they're quickly approaching one and one territory. Inbound underneath their own bucket for the Jackets. Here's famous left hand. Richmond drives baseline, double team stripped away, but a foul in the process. Wow, the Central fans and head coach Brian Rintaw wanted traveling there. Yeah, Brandon Rintaw, excuse me. So a lot of calls for traveling for traveling from the student section. That will send Zoran Richmond back to the line for a couple more free throws. MSUB just three of six at the line to start the game. Trying to make it a two possession game once again. And he will by hitting the first. Richmond now has five points. Interestingly, you look at Central Washington. They got 12 points in the ball game. They are getting that from six separate players. They got six guys with two points in this game. No one with multiple field goals yet for the Wildcats. And Richmond hits a pair. Lead back to five, 17 to 12, our score. First points in a long time for MSUB. Yellow Jackets just won their first regular season title during their time in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. Corner three won't go. It's tracked down by Steven Richardson. MSUB back the other way. They come into the postseason on a loss. They lost their regular season finale up at Alaska Anchorage. 84-78, or 84 78, the final score of that one. Moody caught on the block, gets it to Richmond. His three, that'll go. So Richmond now with nine in this game. Lead back out to eight for the Jackets. McNeil getting a little fancy. Reverse up and in as he cuts the baseline. Quite the move from Cameron McNeil. Fancy, a really good word for that baseline drive. Jalen Tuck hasn't had to have too much of the offense run through him so far. Richmond underneath, he's gonna get called for the push off. 
tried to create some space. He'll be dinged for his first personal foul of the game. So nice to see so much GNAC love in the crowd. The Central women's team is here. I watched most of them walk in earlier. Of course, the Alaska Anchorage men are still here to see who they're going to play and scout the team that they will play tomorrow night. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup no matter what. Either a six versus a four or a six versus a one. There's plenty of storylines to be had in either of those championship scenarios. Foul's going to be called on famous left hand, his first. Inbound for the Wildcats with 20 on the shot clock. 8.43 remains here in the first half. Wildcats trailing by six. Samad Hector gets the inbound. Uh, working baseline, it's Maverick Sanders has to give it up. Seth Dawson from the angle, no good. Richmond has the rebound. Working quickly, left hand. We'll see him try a three for the first time, and he delivers. First point for famous left hand in this game. Spinning, Sanders, fadeaway. Might have been tipped, but he gets it to go anyway. Tough shot. Well contested, but Maverick Sanders delivers nonetheless. Nice spin baseline by Sanders, a needed bucket for Central. Offensive output starting to pick up for the Wildcats. Still just shooting 31.6%. Yet to hit a three. Central Washington 0 of 6 from deep right now in this game. Todd gets it to the angle. Moody leaves it short. Going to be last touch by Richmond out of bounds at Central Basketball. That'll take us to the timeout under eight. 7.45 left in half number one. Montana State Billings 23, Central Washington 16 here on GNAC.TV. Seven forty-five left in the first half. Yellow Jackets have enjoyed a lead the entirety of this ball game. It's been as many as eleven. Currently stands at seven at twenty-three to sixteen. Wildcat basketball coming out of the timeout, spinning into the lane. It's Swilly. There's going to be a foul on that shot, but it's going the other way. Offensive foul call on the Wildcats. And it looks like it's going to go against Samad Hector. First foul on Hector in this game, who's been quiet offensively so far, just two points. But then again, leading score for the Wildcats is only at four. So instead of an offensive foul, they're going to call it a loose ball foul, which will send Richmond to the line for one and one. And Zeron Richmond already making his third trip to the free throw line in this game. He's a perfect four for four. He's been the only Yellow Jacket to get to the strike. First free throw good as he stays perfect there. That gets him to double figures. Ten first half points for Richmond to go along with three rebounds. Perfect from the field as well. Two for two, including one of one from beyond the arc. And he'll hit another free throw. Been as efficient as it gets so far for Zeron Richmond. 25-16. 
the Montana State Billings lead. Cross court pass to Swilly. He decides to slow it down. Five up! Five up! Switch! Shot clock down to 10 for the Wildcats. Hector looking to hand it off. Eventually gets it over to Lloyd. Four to shoot. Bounce pass now into the corner. Sanders has to get something off. As time expires, he does connect with the iron. Then a foul in the air. Looks like it'll go on Jalen Todd. And it will on the loose ball. That's going to be foul number one on him. Clark feeling that one. Hit the deck super hard. And he's in pain right now. Jalen Tott, your Great Northwest Athletic Conference Player of the Year, averaging 15 and a half points a game. A steal and a half, 3.3 assists in his second season with the Jackets after transferring in from Dawson Community College. With his Player of the Year award this year, MSUB becomes the first team in the history of the conference to have two separate players win a Player of the Year award in consecutive seasons. Carrington Wiggins did it last year. Free throw drops for Jordan Clark. It's now a 25-18 ball game. Todd. Now up top for left hand. A pass off. Spinning underneath Richmond. Going to be blocked by Sanders. Loose ball. Richmond gets it back. Gets it to go on the second chance. Couple blocks tonight already for Sanders, but staying with it, Richmond doing good things. Zaron Richmond, 13 points in the half. Now a three on the top from, that was Jello Lloyd, that won't go. Todd can move it in transition. Looking for an opening, has it poked away. Off of the glass, it belongs to Swilly. Swilly wants to push the pace coming back. He gets it into the corner. Now back out for Sanders, wide open for three, leaves it short. Richmond chases it down, is gonna be fouled in the process. That's gonna be another on Samad Hector, his second. And who else going to the line but Richmond for his fourth trip? Just call him the designated free throw shooter at this point. He's had plenty of opportunity at the line and he's delivered each time six for six at the free throw line. 13 points, four rebounds already in just 12 minutes of work for Richmond. He got a very brief break. And then came right back on. Two-time honorable mention all-conference honoree. Can he make it seven straight at the line to start? He can't. Misses the first on the one and one. Wildcats will come back the other way. Sanders able to stay in bounds there nearly on the baseline. Sanders will try a three now in front of his own bench, or in front of the MSUB bench actually, and that will not go. 27-18 our score, nine point advantage for the Jackets. Moody tries to turn around off the glass, won't go. Sanders reels it in. First rebound of the Knights for Maverick Sanders. Looks like Jordan Clark got tripped up on that one. They're going to say it's against Jawan Todd. First foul for him. And that will send the Wildcats to the line for one and one. Central Washington still missing out on their first three-pointer. 0 of 9 from deep. First free throw goes. It's important for the Wildcats in this final 5:27 of the half that they get it closer, that they don't go down 10, 11, 12. It's been 8, 9 for a while. They need to make a small run before halftime. Playing here at home has been their bread and butter all season long. 14 and 1 here at home this season. But currently struggling to find their footing against a very tough Yellow Jacket team. That one through the legs of Richmond. Through the wickets, oh goodness. And then given right back, a couple of ugly turnovers back to back. Sometimes that basketball's slippery pig out there. 
the lone time Central Washington has lost here in Ellensburg. Who else against but Montana State Billings back on January 4th. It is a 74-59 win for the Jackets. Other than that, they've been perfect here at Nicholson Arena. <laughs> Zaron Richmond back to the line again. This is... He's just finding his opportunities at the free throw line. He's only missed one free throw so far. Seven point advantage. Richmond hits the first. That's 14 for him. He'll be on double-double watch as he's already got five rebounds as well. You look up and down this stat sheet for Central Washington, no one's sticking out, but they've also got a lot of people contributing. Eight different scorers so far in this game of the 10 that have played. Balance is good, they just need more of it. But they need to combine with it. They have the balance, they need to get the efficiency. 28% field goal shooting and not hitting any of your nine three-pointers, that's not gonna do it. Very difficult to win basketball games if you're putting up those kind of numbers. The Wildcat basketball trailing by nine. Under five minutes left in the first half. Alaska Anchorage Seawolves, the number six seed, awaiting the winner of this game as for the third consecutive year, the lowest seed in the tournament will be playing for the title. Maverick Sanders spins, has three defenders around him. They get it to the corner, find the open man and the three down for Bradley Swilly. Swilly with an interesting start to his shot down on his hip eventually gets it to go and it takes 10 attempts for the Wildcats to get a three-pointer down the lead just at six now for MSUB taught to get it right back misses everything to the delight of the central crowd the central Wildcat faithful I think they try to cut it to a three-point lead here. There's nothing this student section loves more than an air ball from the opposition. Nothing they love more than that. Yeah, big opportunity here to get it down to one possession with a three, but the way they're shooting it, you can't imagine that there's going to be anything coming from the exterior. Bounce pass inside. Brzee gets it to go. What a bounce pass from Sanders. Sanders, great vision, knowing the double team came, so his teammate wide open, Brzee, right there. 29-25, Wildcats hanging around. Todd gets it off to Jawan Todd. Nope. A little bit deep on That's that That's off one. of Moody. Last touch by the Jackets. Central getting the basketball back. You can feel the energy returning to this building. Media timeout, 3.35 left in half number one. Wildcats developing a little bit of momentum. 29-25, Jackets lead has shrunk to four. Three thirty-five left in half number one. Central Washington has cut it to a four-point game. They've got the ball. Sean Wally, what's going on to get Wildcats back into this game? Well, they finally hit a three-pointer. That helps. And three-pointer is really the difference in this game right now. MSUB's hit five. All the other numbers are similar. Handling up top is Brzee. The post gives it up. Shot clock to 13. Sanders fade away from the elbow. They're going to count the button. No, they're going to stay on the floor. 
foul away from the shot. Oh, they are counting the bucket. Shot was definitely in the air when they blew the whistle. So the foul away, they're counting the bucket. So Brzee gets himself to the line. And it'll be a chance to make this a one point game for the junior. He delivers. Central Washington wants down as many as 11. Now within one. Brzee can tie the ball game. So Brzee, with a free throw here, makes this a 29-29 game. To catch you up, Sanders had the jumper from the elbow that went. Brzee was the one fouled away from the ball, so that's why he is shooting the free throws. Gets them both to go, and all of a sudden, that's a four-point trip down the floor for Central Washington. Big swing for them. They are tied for the first time in almost 15 minutes. What a comeback by the home Central Washington Wildcats. Deep three for Jalen Taunt, and that will put an end to that tie very quickly. He gives the shh finger to the mouth to quiet the crowd. Six points for Taunt. Now he pokes it away. Wants to get out in front of the Wildcats. Wait for two defenders to get past him. Misses the easy layup. Loose ball still belongs to the Jackets. Famous left hand. Cutting. Reverse won't go. Three-point ball game in favor of MSUB. They have not trailed in this game. Sanders narrowly avoids the walk. Step up three for Swilly. High rebound belongs to Moody. This building might have blown the roof off. This crowd, if that had gone in. These three-pointers just not working out for the Wildcats. One for 11 now from three. Todd fighting his way in. He's going to draw a foul. And for the first time in this game, someone besides Zoran Richmond heading to the line for the Yellow Jackets. Zoran was responsible for their first five trips to the line. And now it'll be Jalen Todd that gets a chance with two shots. Well, it's an ugly way to make it, but the first one goes for him. That's now seven points for him. A couple of subs for the Wildcats, as we're going to see Colby Jeanette check into the game for Mitch Brzee. Wildcats have to be careful here for the final two minutes. They got even. And Todd goes one for two at the line. The advantage now four for MSUB. Here's Seth Dawson again, who's getting a lot more time in the quarters than he did, or in the semis than he did in the quarters. That is top side three. Maverick Sanders brings it back to a one-point game on just the second three-pointer from Central. Sanders feeling it here tonight, not afraid to pull the trigger. Famous left hand. He hasn't had a bunch of touches in this game. Gives it off to Ooh. Richmond. Blocked by Sanders. Sanders doing things right on both ends of the floor. Wildcats can take the lead. Sanders from the top side, the first lead, no. Knocked out of bounds, it'll belong to MSUB. What a huge shot that would have been. Maverick Sanders wide open on that three, would have given Central Washington their first lead of the game. Instead with 119 left in half number one, Montana State Billings controlling, bringing it across half court. Here's Richardson. Richardson with five in this game. Final minute. Gives it up. Now in transition. Seth Dawson the other way. Layup won't go. Offensive rebound. Second try. No. How was there not a foul on MSUB there? And eventually an MSUB timeout taken. Two easy layups won't go. And Central Washington head coach Brandon Renta out at half court furious. Jackets take the timeouts. You can see Jeanette get shoved about three rows into the stands, it felt like. 
Hart's body went flying. No call. A couple of and Rintel wants an explanation. A couple of huge opportunities for the Wildcats underneath. They cannot get a layup to go to take their first lead. 49.9 seconds left in the first half as we step away on GNAC.TV. Forty nine point nine seconds left in the first half. MSU B with a narrow 33-32 lead and the basketball here at Nicholson Arena. Fourth and final game of the day and our final semifinal from the 2024 GNAC Championships. Daniel Movie moving into the paint, gets it outside to Zeron Richmond, who connects with his second three-pointer. 18 in the first half for Richmond. Lead back to four for the Jackets. Enough to quiet the crowd with 22 seconds left in the half. Shot clock should be off. And the percentage just different enough that the shot clock is on, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same shot clock is off as Bradley Swilly holds for the last shot of the half. Steps to his left, lets a three-pointer go. That will not go. Tot holds it in. Buzzer goes, and that is the first half in the books. MSU B led by as many as 11. Central pulled it to even, but did not lead for any point in the first half. Our score at the break, Montana State Billings 36. Central Washington, 32. A chance to play the Alaska Anchorage Seawolves for the 2024 title on the line with 20 minutes left to go. We'll step aside back in about 10 minutes for first half analysis and the second half action here on GNAC.TV.
36-32 our score at the half. Montana State Billings with a four point lead over Central Washington in the semifinals of the 2024 GNAC Championships. The Jackets with their advantage on the back of 18 points, six rebounds in the first half from Zoran Richmond, shooting 38.5% as a team. On the other side, the Wildcats took them a while to find their footing, missed their first nine three-pointers before hitting one. They're two of 14 from deep, just 32% on field goal shooting in the first half. Sean Wally, as we turn to the final 20 minutes of regulation, what are the adjustments the Wildcats are going to have to make if they want to complete this upset? They need to figure out how to get the basketball through the hoop much better than they did in the first half. Sounds simple, but that's really what is separating these two teams right now. Seven of 12 is Billings from beyond the arc and nine of 11 from the free throw line. Central Washington, just 32.4% from the field and 2 of 14 from 3. In speaking with head coach for Central Washington, Brandon Rinta, before the game, his thoughts on the keys to success, minimize turnovers, and as a result, points off of turnovers and crash the boards. Given those two goals, do you feel like Central Washington has achieved that so far in this game? Both teams are crashing the boards, dead even at 21 rebounds apiece. Every other statistic is very, very similar, if not the same, for these two, two squads. So really, it's shooting and getting the ball through the hoop that is the difference, and that's why Montana State Billings has the lead at the moment. Wildcats led by the seven points of Maverick Sanders. They got six as well from Mitch Brzee. Bench scoring right now, 14 to zero in favor of the Wildcats. We have not seen a non-starter score yet for the Yellow Jackets but they have just gotten a combined 13 minutes from Jawan Tot, Whitaker, and Janaku. They are combined 0 for 2 from the field. It'll be Central Washington basketball to start the second half. On the floor for the Wildcats, Swilly to inbound, Clark in the backcourt. They've also got Samad Hector, Maverick Sanders, And Bradley Swilly, along with Jordan Clark, rounding out the five. Jello Lloyd out there as well, moving in transition. Richardson has to bail it out. Here's Ron Richmond. Big first half for him, going into the paint. Blocked again by Maverick Sanders. Sanders has been everywhere, and there's the assist. No. On the other end, another block. That's now three blocks in this game for Sanders, but we get one at the other end, so no scoring yet in the second half. Is Famous left hand works inside. He's had a quiet offensive night, just three points, two rebounds, and an assist for the freshman. I'd say for the transfer junior. Corner three, that's Steven Richardson. Can't get it to go. High offensive rebound. Richmond knocks his man to the ground, puts it in. No foul called. And Maverick Sanders was looking for the charge. Guessing that was because he was under the basket. 20 points. For Richmond now, Sanders responds with a three in front of the student section. One possession game yet again. 38-35 our score, MSUB in control, but not by much. Left hand gets held, and it's gonna be Jello Lloyd that picks up the foul. That'll be his first of the evening. We can't Jello Lloyd, Jello Lloyd, senior guard, honorable mention. Back up, back. Watch your back up. For Central Washington. Only started four of the 27 regular season games for the Wildcats, and now we've seen him in the starting rotation each of the last two days. Left hand dumps it underneath for Richmond to work. 10 footer in the lane, left short. Chance to tie it with a three. Wildcats have not led in this game. Step back jumper, no good as that one left short by Lloyd. Saved an offensive rebound and a second chance here for the Wildcats. Into the corner, a three to tie it for Swilly. No. Loose ball and it belongs to Jalen Todd. Again, shots coming tough to fall for Central early on. 
Jackets moving along the outside. Eventually they get it to Jalen Tuck. Left hand into the paint. Gets it to go. Tough shot from about seven feet. And just a second made field goal in this game for famous left hand. Great drive there by left hand in the paint. Back to a five point lead. Dumping inside, Samad Hector going to work on Richmond. Gets underneath him, reverses it up and in. What a move from Samad Hector. Strong move to go baseline. You could tell Hector was determined right away on the block. Back to a three point ball game, 40-37 Jackets. Three minutes expired here in the second half. Daniel Moody. Loses the dribble, gives it off the left hand. His three rattles out. Loose ball, knocked to the ground is Jordan Clark. And it'll be out of bounds, last touch by the Jackets. Cabin Holden back in, he checks in for Jello Lloyd. In the first half, Holden just took one shot in nine minutes of work and assists and a couple of personal fouls limited his time on the floor. Another opportunity to tie for the Wildcats. We have seen just one tie in this game. Gonna go back down on the block to Hector. They found a lot of success last time through. Samad now goes for the hook with the right and he gets it. Hector has the ability to take this game over. It's two for two here in the second half. Yeah, that, they might be running their offense through him. You know, that's a couple of really solid looks he had. All of a sudden, it's a one-point ball game, and Zeron Richmond doesn't seem to have the answer defensively to him. Richmond powers inside, gets his own miss. He now pops it out. Left hand up top. Bouncing it. Jalen Tott, a three, nails it. Deep in the corner, off balance, impressive. They haven't needed a huge workload from him offensively, but he does make it into double digits now with 10. To get it right back, here's Jordan Clark, buries it. Great answer by Clark to the delight of the home faithful. This student section just asking for a reason. Asking for a reason to bring that energy back and you can sense it growing a little bit. Todd, another three, this one from the top side, won't go and Hector with the rebound. Did you see Hector sky for that ball? He got up there. And the old field goal will give the Wildcats their first lead. Maverick Sanders pops it out. Swilly draws two defenders, gets it out to Hector for three! Samad Hector gives Central Washington their first lead. 25 minutes into this game, 45 and 43 Wildcats. Wildcats have come all the way back. Perseverance. Zaron Richmond. Backs down Sanders, moves inside of him, lays it up and in to even it back up. Make that 22 in the game for Zaron Richmond to lead all scorers. And he has more than double any other player in this game. He will be dinked for the foul, it's his second. And that'll bring us in to the timeout under 16. 14-41, left in the second half. Montana State Villains 45, Central Washington 45 here on GNAC.TV.
Just over 14 and a half minutes remaining in the second half. Deadlocked at 45, MSUB and Central Washington. We saw a Wildcat lead for a brief 22 seconds just a few moments ago after the Samad Hector three. They'll now try and get it back on the top side from Cabin. Oh, wow. That won't go, and Zoran Richmond ends up coming away with it with his eighth rebound. Sanders, a great tip there. It almost went in. Richmond closing in on a double-double as he's got 22 and seven on six of 11 shooting. Famous left hand now going to work. Has his pocket picked by Samad Hector. Hector wants to go the distance himself, and they're going to say a traveling violation on the take. Just the sixth turnover of this game by the Wildcats. Both these sides have actually taken very good care of the basketball and combined 13 turnovers to this point between the two sides. Seven for MSUB and now six for Central Washington. Hector a little too excited to give his team the lead. He had a teammate running with him, should have given the ball up. Jalen Tott handling top. Then another look at Bryce Whitaker. Haven't seen much of him in this game. Moody tries to go glass and he gets a tough shot with the right hand. But Daniel Moody recording his second field goal. He's now got five points and three boards, or three assists to go along with six boards. 47-45 Jackets. Can they hold off the Central Washington Wildcats and deal them just their second home loss of the year? Corner three. Left short, rebound pulled in by Jonaku. Whitaker looks to drive, pops it out. Richardson will slow things down. Shot clock down to 10 as Whitaker lets it go, falling off to his left, he hits the three. Central Washington's got to be careful. Keep this one close. Keep the crowd in it. Keep their confidence up. Pass underneath. Maverick Sanders going to work on a Jonaku. Tries to pass it out. It's taken away by Richardson. Up ahead for Whitaker. He'll try another three to make it back to back, and he does. That'll trigger a timeout for Central Washington as the lead has expanded to eight for the Jackets. 12 27 to play. MSUB now up 53-45 here in Ellensburg. Bryce Whitaker's first points from the bench for MSUB have pushed the Yellow Jackets lead back out to eight. 53-45 their advantage, 12-27 remaining in the second half. Central Washington with the basketball coming out of the timeout and they needed that one to slow down this momentum. It's an 8-0 run after we were tied at 45. Here's Bradley Swilly trying to get something going for the Wildcats. Loses it, taken away by Richardson. He's got another steal. Moving quickly, gives it off to Moody. He'll drive to the hoop and puts it up with the right hand. You blink, and the Yellow Jackets are up 10. Points off of turnovers becoming a big deal for the Jackets. That's now 11 for MSUB. Central Washington, zero. 
55-45 the score. Moving his man in, Cameron McNeil pops it out. Now trying a three, Jeanette's, he'll connect. Jeanette's been quiet tonight, not a lot of playing time. He's taking advantage of that right there. Jeanette now with five points and his first made three of the ball game. Cuts the lead to seven. And a whistle, it looks like it's gonna be on Mitch Brzee. That'll be his first. That'll take us into the timeout. 11.20 left to go in the second half. Seven point advantage for the Yellow Jackets. 55-48 our score here on GNAC.TV. Fifty-five, forty-eight. the Yellow Jacket lead over the Wildcats. MSUB riding high on 61.5% field goal shooting in the second half. They handle the basketball coming out of the timeouts. Bryce Whitaker providing some needed bench points here in the last few minutes. The Jonaku outside to Richardson. MSUB trying to expand their advantage. Whitaker a step back three, he gets it again. Oh, Bryce Whitaker. Just what the doctor ordered for the Yellow Jackets. They're up 10 again. Three for three from deep for the junior guard, Bryce Whitaker, out of Los Angeles. Driving to his left. Cameron McNeil has some trouble with the Jonaku, and he will miss. 58-48, our score. Largest lead for MSUB was 11. A field goal would push it to 12 here. Ten and a half minutes left in the ball game. Jackets trying to play for the title in both the men's and the women's side. Richardson drives. His layup won't go. Fighting for it, pulled down by Jeanette. Got to wonder how long Central Washington will leave Hector on the bench and Sanders. Kevin Holden's deep three just off. Things starting to fall apart for Central Washington. A little reverse for Whitaker won't go, but he's going to the line anyway. Foul's going to be called on Brzee. That's second on Mitch Brzee. Nobody stopped the penetration. Brzee just threw his body in the middle because nobody else was there. Didn't allow the easy layup. Make him earn him at the stripe. Bryce Whitaker hits the first to match the largest lead of the game for Montana State Billings. The Jack is a 73% free throw shooting team. Middle of the pack of the conference this year in that regard. Very interesting stat here. Eight turnovers for Billings. Central has zero points off those eight turnovers. And you can also see fast break points zero. They just haven't been moving in transition. And if they have, it is not converted. So both very concerning stats right now to look like zero fast break points, zero points off of turnovers. Central Washington just having trouble moving with the tempo that they need to. They trail now by 12. Largest lead of the game for the Yellow Jackets. Jordan Clark, body through Tot, gets it to go to bring it back to 10. 60 to 50 our score, 9.39 left. Defense! 
Jalen caught off the famous left hand. And a whistle underneath. It's going to go against Jeanette. That'll be foul number three on him. Team foul number four on Central Washington here in the second half. We've just seen one MSUB foul so far in ten and a half minutes of play in the second half. And there is Sanders coming back off the bench. Five up! Left hand. Bryce Whitaker pops it back out. Shot clock down to seven for the Jackets. Totten needs to make something happen quickly here. Doesn't get a high screen. Shot clock to two. He lets it go. And then rims off. Hector and Sanders both back in. If the Wildcats are going to make a run, now's the time to do it. And that helps. Step up three for Cameron McNeil. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Lead is seven now. 60-53, MSUB on top. Zeron Richmond, off the famous left hand. Daniel Moody cuts through his defenders. Can't get it to go. Samad Hector collects. Not often Moody gets that close to the rim and misses. That was rebound number six now for Samad Hector. Bucket here, very needed for the huge, Wildcats. Huge size advantage with Tot on him. Instead, they get it up top. And Jordan Clark delivers with a trade. That's going to trigger an MSUB timeout. The lead moments ago was 12 for the Jackets. It's down to four. 8.20 to play. This one not over. MSUB 60, Central Washington 56 on GNAC.TV. Central Washington going on a little bit of a run. Got the lead for MSUB down to four. 60-56 the score. Three-pointers starting to heat up for the Wildcats. As the shooting streaks go, so go this game. The last time out, MSUB was at over 60% for the half. That's come down a bit to 52.9. Central Washington has matched them now at 52.9 from the field this half. Going to be a fun final 8-15. Neither team who's shooting particularly well in the first half. 38.5 from the field for MSUB, 32.4 for Central Washington. That's heated up on both sides. Left hand to Moody. The connection for the alley-oop dunk. And it's back to six. Maverick Sanders in to Samad Hector. Tries to find Sanders again underneath. It's pulled away. The steal for famous left hand, his first of the evening. And afford turnovers at this juncture. Jalen Todd going to get bodied by Cameron McNeil, who picks up his first personal. Todd pumps out three push ups, gets up with a smile. So an inbound for MSUB with 22 seconds on the shot clock. The lead not large enough yet where they can have the luxury of just draining clock each time down the floor. You need to have quality possessions and find some more buckets 
before they can even bring that into consideration. Famous left hand hits it. Count the bucket. Four point opportunity coming for the Jackets. Coaches for Central Washington just shake their head at that one. Famous left hand hits his second three pointer of the game. Gets fouled in the process. So he will look for the four point play. And this would move this lead back to double figures for MSUB. Man. If we had replay, that would help so much. Didn't look like a lot of contact. Might have been a little bit of acting, but we can't double check. The free throw won't go, so it'll have to settle for a three-point play for left hand. The lead at nine for the Jackets. Jordan Clark. They swing it off. McNeil moving in, splits a couple of defenders and he gets it to go. Cameron McNeil now with nine. Where has he been hiding that this game? That came out of his left pocket, I think. We did see him have an explosive dunk yesterday, so we know he's got it in him. Jalen Tott off the famous left hand. And it's gonna be a foul away from the ball. A little bit of physicality between Sanders and Zoran Richmond. It's going to be Sanders that's ding for his third. It's interesting to see where that line is that the referees draw because they're both tied up together. So where is that line you decide, okay, that's too far for this player versus that player? You know, I think a lot of times it's just whenever the official finally looks over to what's going on, who made the last contact physically. Just kind of a timing thing in those spots. You know, they were both really leaning into each other, and Sanders, I think, just happened to be the last one to do it. Whistle underneath, gonna say a shot, or a foul on the floor, no shot. And that's gonna be Stephen Richardson that's getting ticked for the personal foul. 65, 58 the score, 641 remaining here in Ellensburg. Where's Alley the foul? Shot. Holy Simone cow. Hector knocked to the ground. He can't get it to go. And the Central Washington bench furious. Richmond holds on to it. Shot clock winding down to 10. Moody goes to work on Hector. Gonna be knocked away, Samad Hector. Picks up his first block of the game. Fifth total for wow. Central Washington. Almost taken away by Moody as he goes diving for it at half court. Getting underneath, little floater, left short. And controlled by Montana State Billings. Double teamed there is McNeil. Share the basketball, especially down seven. Yellow Jackets, Tot for three, he'll hit it. 13 points in the game for Jalen Tot. Four of eight from three point range. And Central Washington wants timeout. 538 remains in the ball game. 10 points, the MSUB advantage. 68-58 here on GNAC TV.
5.38 remains in the ball game. Montana State Billings enjoying a 68-58 advantage. Wildcats have come within four in this last series. But the Jackets pushing it back out. Maverick Sanders into the paint. Gets past to Jonathan, who can't get it to go, but he'll be heading to the line. Sanders was big in the first half and early in this half here in the second, but he's been sitting down a lot. It'd be nice for the Wildcats if he can get it going down the stretch. Lead has been as many as a dozen for MSUB. Sanders, four of 10 shooting, two of six from three, four rebounds, one assist. He converts a pair at the line, so now an eight-point ball game, 68-60. Central Washington in this game, 10 for 12 at the free throw line. Pass into the corner, cross court. Now to the angle, Richmond wants to drive, gives it up, Ajanaku loses it off of the iron, and last touch by MSUB, Central Washington basketball on the Jackets' ninth turnover of the game. Not sure that's exactly what Jackets head coach Luke Fennelly wanted telling his team to calm down after that mishap. Fennelly in his first year at the helm leads MSUB to their first regular season title in their GNAC era. And there's going to be a foul underneath. It's Jordan Clark. It's bodied by Jalen Todd. Todd gets called for his second personal. For Fennelly, that's Awesome to put on his coaching resume. First year, conference, regular season title. Maverick Sanders for three. Wildcats needed that one. That doesn't catch anything, and it's out of bounds. Brandon Rents on the other side for Central Washington. Fantastic resume as well. He was NAIA National Coach of the Year back in 2013 when he was at LC State. Spent five seasons as an assistant at Northwest Nazarene before he went to LC State to take the head coaching job. So he had some GNAC experience previously and has some Division I work as well at Eastern Washington. For Luke Fennelly, he was in D1 ball at Montana State. As Ajanaku gets the easy bucket underneath, defense breaks down and leaves him alone. Not sure how Central can forget about the tallest guy on the floor. 10 point ball game. Jordan Clark tries to get some back. Samad Hector, count the bucket. His putback will go, and he's heading to the free throw line. Hector has had spurts in this game where he has been the man. He did that right there. He is now a rebound away from his eighth double-double of the season. 11 points, nine boards in this one for Hector as he heads to the free throw line to try and make this a seven-point game. And he does. Make it a dozen for the senior, Samad Hector. Wildcats hanging around. They refuse to go away. Still a lot of time left, just over four minutes in this ball game. Whitaker will handle up top. Shot clock gets down to 10. He waits for the high screen from Ajanaku. It was good for Hector to get up on him because he's hit some deep threes here this second half. Jay One second left. Jalen Todd from just in front of the half court line misses everything and a shot clock violation. That'll take us into a media timeout. Three minutes, 38 seconds remaining. MSUB 70, Central Washington 63 on GNAC TV.
Wildcat basketball coming out of the timeout in need of some scoring here late. Three and a half minutes to play and a 70-63 MSUB lead over Central Washington. Hector with Richmond on him. Goes to work into the paint. Two defenders What a find. On. Ooh, what a block. That allows the cut for Kevin Holden, but he is blocked. Jackets will come the other way. Nice idea from the Wildcats, but can't connect. Good recovery on defense for the block to save the day. Coming out, Kevin! Left hand to Richardson. Out, now Moody up top. Shot clock down to 10. MSUB. More than happy to take up a good portion of these shot clocks on their possessions. Moody goes way too strong off the glass. Left hand recovers, hits off the iron as the shot clock expires. Another chance for the Jackets, and Zoran Richmond delivers his third three-pointer of the game. Three of three from deep for him, now 25 points to lead all scores. On the other end, Jordan Clark gets the hoop and a foul. Count the bucket, the foul's going to go against left hand, his third personal. Thought for a moment that three on the other side by Richmond might do it, but now possible three-point play to negate that three. A season high in rebounds for Richmond. As he's got 25 and 11 in this game, his first double-double of the year as well. He's had a couple of big offensive games as of late. To end the regular season, Richmond, 31 points against Fairbanks, 30 against Anchorage, and now 25 in this one. Hector's come out of the game for Central Washington with 2.26 left. How important is it to have him on the floor here over the last two and a half minutes? Not sure I understand that one. Maybe a quick break? Right there with you. Don't understand that at all. But we are not a head coach. Yeah, yeah, and there is very good reason for that. 73-66 MSUB's lead over Central Washington. Jalen Todd into the corner. Richardson lets it go, rattles out. Another offensive board for Richmond, who puts it back and in. Make it 27-12 and 12 for the senior. Nine-point deficit for the Wildcats. Got to have this if you're central, and they do. Jordan Clark gets the step back three. He's got 18 in the game, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 149 left to play, just six points. The advantage for MSUB. This one far from over here on GNAC TV. Well, Samad Hector back on the floor coming out of the timeout, so a brief break for him indeed. It'll be MSUB basketball with 148 left to play. They lead by six, 75-69, our score. Jackets looking to head back to the GNAC championship. Zaron Richmond with 90 seconds remaining in the game, dumps it back outside, shot clock to seven now. Jalen Todd has to get off something here in the last couple of seconds. Oh away. boy. Hector up ahead in transition, knocked away. They're gonna say a foul as Kevin Holden had a shot in transition and the foul goes on famous left hand. And that's gonna be number four on him. Last two possessions down for MSUB. They've looked unsure. Yes, they're using clock, but you have to have at least a plan of a play with six, five, four seconds left on the clock. First Gotta the hit one the free one. throw. First of the one and one does not go. MSUB with the ball back. And yes, if you are the Wildcats, you had to have that. Luke Fennelly calls timeout for the Jackets as they got caught up 
in their own backcourt. 111 left, still a six point ball game, and MSUB with the ball here on GNAC TV. Seventy-five, sixty-nine. MSUB leads Central Washington. Big free throw miss on a one and one just now for the Wildcats. MSUB with the basketball coming out of the timeout. Timeout situation right now. Central Washington out. Jackets have one left. Just over a minute left to play. Wildcats have to have a couple of stops and a couple of buckets. Have to have it. And Jalen Todd's going to use up some time, try and get this one down under the 52nd mark and we're going to see a foul underneath it's going to be a blocking call on Samad Hector Hector picking up his third it's bonus the rest of the way for both sides that's team foul number eight now on central seven on the other side for MSUB with 53.7 left on the clock let's talk seniors for central Washington Jello Lloyd Cam McNeil and Samad Hector. Three integral parts of this Wildcat team. They've called all three of their names here tonight. Free throw is missed. Jalen Todd tracks it down after it's lost in the paint. And then coming in, Maverick Sanders runs into his legs. So right back to the free throw line for MSUB. This time it'll be Todd. Wildcats getting another gift and they can't receive it. Jackets 11 of 15 at the free throw line. Their lead is six. First free throw down for Todd, and that's a big one. That makes it a three possession game. He's now got 14, one of three scores in double figures for MSUB. Get the shoot! Todd can't hit the second, so the lead stands at seven. Wildcats have to move quickly. McNeil is going to be fouled in transition. He's tripped by Todd, who's dinged with his, for, his fourth foul. So that's now four for left hand Todd and Ajanaku. The Jackets giving Central Washington hope and a little bit of life every time they foul them because it stops the clock. The clock is not the Wildcat friend right now. MSUB just needs to keep the clock running and this game is theirs so something going on here officials a little unclear on what's going on central washington has issue with whatever is happening here bryce whitaker going to check in for the jackets but brandon rinta and his head assistant drew church both having words with the officials not sure exactly what they were uh, protesting there but something Free throw goes for McNeil there in the second. Cameron McNeil. Now 10 points and five rebounds coming off the bench for the Wildcats. Makes it a six point ball game. A lot of things have to happen here in the last 47 seconds if you're Central Washington. Another sub in as Colby Jeanette returns to the game for the Cats. Hector checks out. Wow. Pass stolen away. So a chance here for Central Washington. They get it up ahead to Maverick Sanders. Off to McNeil. He runs inside, lays it up and in. Just like that, a four point ball game. Up ahead, here's Whitaker. And Central Washington's going to have to foul. And they do. It 
Yeah, am I mistaken, or should this be a 76-73 game right now? I swear it was 76-71. Yeah, it, so it is absolutely going to be 76-73, yeah. one possession game. Yeah, so this is this is a three-point ball game. They just did not get one point on the board. This is a 76-73 game. That's what our online stats are saying. Yeah, and it's going to be corrected on the scoreboard. So what happened was it was on that layup from McNeil. Only one point went on the board for that. So we got it all figured out. 76-73 is the correct score. 33.8 seconds left here in the second half. Huge free throw for Whitaker. And he hits the first. 12 points off the bench for him. He's been perfect at the line. And perfect from three-point range. Transition ball screen. So now that it's a two-possession game, go for the quick two or do you drop a three? I think you go for the quick two. No timeout here. You just got to get buckets where you can. You don't have the opportunity to get in the huddle and drop a set play for the three. Just get some points quickly. Then worry about a foul and reassess after MSUB gets their free throws. 32 seconds left in the game, five point ball game. Clark gives it up. Swilly He's fouled. gonna be fouled in the air. Left hand, got him. And that's gonna be five on famous left hand as he fouls out. Wow, this could change everything if he can hit all three free throws. Bradley Swilly will be going to the line. He has not shot a free throw yet tonight. On the season, Swilly, a 79.2% free throw shooter. He drains all three of these at the two-point ball game. He would love to be 100% on these. Makes the first. Central Washington refusing to give up down the stretch. They've created opportunities and kept this a very tight ball game despite trailing by as many as 12. A little interesting back and forth between Richardson and Swilly. Swilly talking back, official stepping in right there. It's a one possession game at 78-75. Swilly to make it a two point matchup. And he does. Bradley Swilly hits all three free throws. And how huge was that for the Wildcats? Incredible. Can they come all the way back in the final minute? They are going to pressure as the Jackets are going to run the court. Tot gets double team. MSUB going to be fouled in the backcourt. And it's going to be Cameron McNeil that picks up the foul. Again, we just saw famous left-hand foul out. He is done for the night. His final line, eight points, three rebounds, four assists. Daniel Moody gonna go to the line to try and get this back to a two-possession game. Listen to the home crowd, Wildcat fans. Moody hits the first. Ice in his veins, the 6'7 senior from Tucson, Arizona. 79-76 to score, this, this is it right here. This next free throw is huge. 24.8 seconds on the clock, shot clock is turned off. Central Washington, no timeouts. Moody hits a big one. Back to a four point ball game. Wildcats have to move quickly and then they're gonna have to foul quickly. Ball in the hands of Swilly again. Guarded by Richmond, he drives past him to the left, he gets it to go. How big has Bradley Swilly been down the stretch here? It's back to a two point game. The Wildcats foul again, still 14.3 on the clock, but they're gonna need some missed free throws. Swilly now with 10, none more important than those two right there. That last foul is going to send Jalen Todd to the line, who is two of four from the stripe tonight. And if you're central, all you need is one miss of the two. You don't need them both to drop. 
You just need one to miss, and Todd misses his first. 71% free throw shooter. You would think, as good as he is on the offensive side, he would be a little better at those free throws. That's three misses tonight alone. Todd's second free throw wow. missed as well. No timeouts. Well, he's got the ball. No timeouts for the Wildcats. Ten seconds left in this game. Chance to win with a three. Swilly moves inside. Pops it out. Hector for the win. Oh, my Lord. Samad Hector. Central Washington has taken their first lead in over ten minutes. 81-80 the score. 3.1 seconds left. The biggest shot from the senior with three seconds left. Could be the biggest shot of his life. MSUB still a chance. The Yellow Jackets burned their final timeouts 30 seconds ago. This seemed like the longest of long shots. No quit in the Wildcats. This crowd is a buzzing. Hector, the potential game winner. Energy in here, flat two minutes ago. All of a sudden, the most excited we have seen this home crowd here at Nicholson Arena all night. Samad Hector delivers the most crucial angle three of his collegiate career. And the Wildcats are now just 3.1 seconds away from moving on to the GNAC title game against Alaska Anchorage. Now they need a stop. They can't foul because you send the guy to the line to win it. So they're going to let MSUB take a shot, but they're going to make it hard defensively. This place is rocking, as it should be. The host Central Washington Wildcats three seconds away from playing in tomorrow night's championship. Daniel Moody will be the one to inbound it for Montana State Buildings. He's got Todd and Richmond in the backcourt. Todd's going to have to get rid of something quick. Off to Moody. Moody, the floater, does not go, and that's the ball game. Wow. Central Washington overcomes a 12-point deficit. Samad Hector hits a three-pointer with three seconds left. And the Wildcats are headed to the GNAC title game. Unbelievable. If I didn't just see this happen, Simone Hector hits the three to put Central Washington in the lead. But maybe almost more head scratching, Daniel Moody getting to the rim in the final milliseconds and doesn't get the roll in. You know, I think if that one does go to video review, it doesn't get off the hand before time expires. But a really, really good look for Montana State Billings and a devastating loss here in the semifinals for the Yellow Jackets. Final lines on this one. For MSUB in the loss, they get 27 points, 12 rebounds, and the first double-double of the season for Zeron Richmond. Jalen Todd, 14. Daniel Moody, another 11. And fortunately for the Jackets, this is not the end of the road for them. Absolutely not. As we look at the West Region rankings right now, MSUB currently ranked third. There is really no situation, no combination of things happening where the Montana State Yellow Jackets will not be going to the West Regional. For Central Washington, they are not inside of the top 10. They need this trip to the title game. They need a win. And we will be seeing the number four ranked Wildcats take on the number six seed in Alaska Anchorage Seawolves tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. here at Nicholson Arena. John Wally, as we wrap this one up, final thoughts on an incredible semifinal. The Wildcats did everything initially to give the game away in the first half. Still got down double digits in the second half. What did they never do? Quit. The home crowd helped, absolutely. The fight in the final minute, minute and a half, to come all the way back, impressive. 
Samad Hector delivers as clutch of a three-pointer as you can ask from a young man. And Central Washington only led for 25 seconds of this game, but it was the 25 seconds that mattered. Final score, 81-80 in favor of the Wildcats. Our schedule tomorrow, Western Washington takes on MSUB in the Women's Championship, 5 p.m. The tip-off slate for that one. We follow with a 7.30 start in the Men's Championship. It'll be number six seeded Alaska Anchorage versus number four Central Washington, who continues to perform here at home. For Sean Wally, Dustin Daniel here at Nicholson Arena. We thank you for joining us on a very exciting Friday night. We look forward to speaking with you all again on Saturday here on GNAC.TV.